The last 15 to 20 years of your working career are the most crucial for your retirement, especially if you're hoping to retire early. Today, I'm gonna talk about how you can maximize these high income years to take advantage of all the options within qualified retirement plans and non-qualified investment accounts. Let's face it, if you're between the ages of 40 and 60, and if you have kids, they're probably moving out of the house now and taking their own expenses with them, which means more of your hard-earned cash is staying in your pocket. And that means you can contribute a lot to your retirement accounts. So where do you start? How do you take advantage of these higher earning years first. What I want you to do is I want you to max out all available qualified accounts. I'm talking about your 401k, a 403b, a 457 deferred comp plan, IRAs, Roth IRAs. I want you to max out all available qualified retirement accounts. For your 401k, if you're under the age of 50, the most that you can put away is $23,000 for 2024. If you're 50 or over, you get an additional $7,500 in catch-up contributions. So be doing that. Huge goal, I know. If you hit it, great. If you don't, not a big deal. But set that goal. The general limit on a total employer plus employee contribution into a qualified employer-sponsored plan is gonna be $69,000. Or if you're over 50, that's $76,500 total. We're gonna to talk about that a little bit more later on in the video, how you can get that much money into that account. So if you've hit that goal of maxing out your qualified employer sponsored plan, then the next goal you should have is maxing out your own personal retirement account. Again, that could be an IRA or a Roth IRA. And the limit for that, if you're under age 50, that's $7,000 for 2024. If you're over age 50, your contribution limit is $8,000. You might make too much money to qualify for contributing to a Roth IRA. That's okay. Then contribute to a traditional IRA and get the tax break up front. Maybe you make too much money to contribute to an IRA and get the tax deduction. If that's your situation, you can take advantage of doing what's called a backdoor Roth. You make too much money to get the deduction into the IRA. No big deal. Let's just say you're 50 years old. So you put $8,000 into your IRA as a non-deductible contribution. And then the very next day, you call that custodian and say, hey, I want to immediately convert that full amount to a Roth IRA. They do that and boom, now that cash starts growing. You gotta invest it after that, but then you get it invested, it starts growing and all of that growth is gonna be tax-free later on when you touch it in retirement. Now, the power of Roth, if you have that Roth 401k option, Roth 403b option, or just the Roth IRA option, why is that such a powerful tool? It's the tax-free growth and the tax-free distributions. So you could have a source of income in retirement that does not affect your taxes. Ideally, you're gonna be able to draw distributions from both, a little bit from your pre-tax IRA, a little bit from your Roth IRA. So you're living at a high level of income, but it's not all taxable. That'd be a great scenario for you. Now, if you have an employer-sponsored plan and you're a really high income earner and you're starting to see those kids spread their wings and fly and you're saying, I've got quite a bit of income that I could really be throwing towards retirement, we want to talk about the mega backdoor Roth. How does this mega backdoor Roth benefit you? Well, number one, you get to put a lot of money aside for retirement. Number two, if you choose to do the pre-tax version, then you're taking a substantial reduction in your taxable income. Now, not every employer-sponsored plan allows for a mega backdoor Roth. You have to have this right here, additional after-tax contributions. Okay, if your plan allows for additional after-tax contributions and you have a lot of money that you're trying to sock away for retirement, Here's what you can do. Now, the maximum amount that the IRS allows anybody to put into a qualified an employer plan, so this is a 401k, 403b, 457 plan, the most that you can do is $69,000. The most that you can put in in 2024 of your contributions, $23,000.
of your income can go into this within the calendar year. Now, let's say that you get 6% match of your contributions. So now let's say you make $180,000 a year and your company is gonna give you up to the most of a 6% match on your contributions. That's $10,800 that they're gonna contribute. That'd be 6% of your $180,000 income. That's a total of $33,800. But you can afford to contribute more of your income towards retirement, and your plan allows for additional after-tax contributions. So how much can you continue to defer after taxes have already been taken out and it's set aside for retirement? Well, $69,000 minus your $23,000 contribution, minus your employer's $10,800 contribution, leaves you with room for $35,200 of your additional after-tax income could go into this column of your retirement account. And in a perfect scenario, your plan also allows for instant Roth conversion so that this account, this amount goes in, it gets converted to Roth, and then all of the growth on this amount is also tax-free. If your plan doesn't allow for instant Roth conversions, your principal amount remains tax-free because it's additional after tax, but then any growth on that amount would be taxable as income. So ideally, you've got the three columns in your employer-sponsored plan and the provision for instant Roth conversions on that amount, and now, boom, all of this is growing for you tax Free. What do these numbers look like if you're over 50 and you max it out? Well, if you're over 50, here's your numbers. You max this out at $30,500 this year, and you still get your $10,800 match from your employer in this year. That's 6% of $180,000 income. What does that leave you with room to contribute over here? You've got room for an additional $27,700 to go into this additional after-tax contribution column. Now, let's say you're doing that, but you're thinking, I'm building up all of this retirement fund, but it's gonna be stuck inside my employer-sponsored plan, and I can't get to that money until I'm 59 and a half. So how am I gonna use that to retire early? Maybe your plan allows for substantially equal periodic payments. IRS rule 72T. What that just means is there's three different calculation methods that the IRS uses, but you pick one of those that suits your scenario best. And as long as you're willing to take five distributions over the course of five years, you can access the funds as long as it stays within the plan. Rule 72T is a way for you to get money out of that plan You'll still be paying income tax if it's all in the pre-tax portion. If it was all Roth contributions, then you're not paying income tax on that. But it's a way to access funds out of your employer plan prior to 59 and a half without paying the 10% penalty. So it's something to consider if you've been building up a huge retirement nest egg inside of your employer sponsored plan and you're thinking, do I wanna wait until 59 and a half? you might not have to look into rule 72T inside of your plan. So we've covered your qualified plans, but let's say you're maxing all of those qualified accounts and you still have more money that you want to invest for retirement. What do you do? You start investing in a non-qualified account. This could be just an individual brokerage account. It could be a joint investment account. Either way, it's non-qualified. And what does that really mean? It means it doesn't qualify for special tax treatment in the future. Why would you want to be taking excess funds after maxing your qualified plans and investing in a non-qualified account? Here's why. A non-qualified account, you can access money from that at any time. And a non-qualified account is a great way to help you retire early. So if you have access to money within a non-qualified account, maybe you can start having some supplemental income at age 55, age 54, maybe age 56. You access your non-qualified account for supplemental income and you're kind of cruising into ages where you can start drawing social security. But the point is, if you haven't invested into a non-qualified account, you don't have that 
option so that you can retire when you want to, not when you have to. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the little notification icon so that you get updated every time we upload new videos. If you have questions for us, go to our website, therealmoneypros.com. Click on the Ask the Experts feature and we'll get an answer to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching today. We'll catch you again next time. Thank you.